Hello and welcome to Billy's Craft Room. This tutorial is part of my online workshop series, Adventures in Acrylics. For more information about this, please visit the blog. In today's film, I'd like to show you how to create a feathered texture effect. It looks similar to the marble patterns that you find at the front of very old books. Here's a couple of examples of pieces with a feather texture applied. For this project, you'll need De La Rowney texture paste, acrylic paint. I'm using Winsor & Newton's Galleria, which is their Flow Formula acrylic paint, and the colour I'm using is Payne's Grey. A palette knife, these flat ones are most useful. You'll need a jar of water. To add colour to the paste, I'm going to mix it in an old milk bottle top. A piece of cotton rag to clean your tools. And you'll also need some unprinted newspaper. This is available from house moving supply stores. Texture paste is best applied to a more sturdy surface, so I'm using mount board. I'm working on a non-stick craft sheet, which makes it much easier to clean up afterwards. Because I'm going to mix colour into it, I'm putting some of the texture paste into the milk bottle top. It saves having the main jar open for too long. It's also more manageable to control in a small space like this. Don't forget to put the lid back on the main jar. Take a tiny amount of the Payne's Grey onto the palette knife and mix it into the texture paste. Payne's Grey is a strong colour so start out small and add more only if necessary. Continue to mix until you have a colour that you like. It doesn't have to be completely blended. It is quite interesting to leave it slightly unmixed as it creates a nice marbled look as well. Apply the texture paste to the board as if you were buttering bread. Although in this case you want a really generous layer. Continue until you've completely covered the board in a generous layer of texture paste. Don't forget to put the tool straight into a jar of water. Here's where the blank newsprint comes in. It needs to be blank because you don't want to transfer any dirty ink or text to the project. You need to apply it to the texture paste while it's still wet, but you'll get slightly different effects depending on how wet the paste is when you apply the paper, so there's plenty of room to experiment. For even more texture, scrunch the paper up before you apply it. I'm just checking to see if the first shine has gone off the paste, which means it's just started to dry. Place the paper on top of the paste and I'm not pressing hard, I'm just making sure that the paper is in full contact with the entire surface of the board and the paste. Now gently and slowly peel the paper off the board. As you peel away, you'll be left with that feathering texture. It's well worth experimenting how long you leave the paper on before you peel it off, as there's quite a variation of effect. Hope you can see the texture in this piece here. Now I need to set it aside to dry completely before you do anything else to the piece. 
have a scrap piece of card to hand because I'm sure you could get a print from this piece of paper while the texture paste is still wet. Each piece you create with this technique will be unique. Here's a few samples of some others that I made earlier. For another effect again, why not use a plastic bag to press into the te wet texture paste to peel away. It gives a different effect but it's worth experimenting just to see what the results will be. I'm now going to add some Payne's Grey onto the sponge to highlight the feathered effect. It's really subtle. It's easy to see in real life. By adding the paint, it really shows up. If you dab very lightly with the sponge, then the paint will only catch on the raised areas. If you want to work the paint into the recesses, just press a little firmer. And here's how the piece looks at this point. You can imagine using much darker colours to create this piece. And if you want a dark background, you can also add a coloured acrylic paint to the texture paste right at the very start. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and will give this technique a try. I'd love to see your results. See you next time for more adventures in acrylics. For more inspiration, please visit the blog on www.billyscraftroom.co.uk.